Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Tudor and welcome to Tutorials. This is video number three. Today we're gonna make a, an AR game in Unity. It's a free throw game where we're gonna shoot some hoops into the AR world. Now, Unity is a very popular game engine, it's free to use. Most uh, indie game developers use it. Um, and they have AR Foundations, which is a, a library, a, a development kit, which taps into Google's AR Core and Apple's AR Kit uh, and combines them together. Unity has uh, created this uh, example scenes using AR Foundations. And uh, we're gonna download that uh, repository holding all these example scenes. And we're gonna basically use that as a starting point for our augmented reality game. We're gonna use a, a script called Place on Plane, which allows us, after using our phone to, after we've scanned the world around us, it allows us to place uh, 3D objects on the planes that we have scanned into the real world. And we'll use that script to place our basketball hoop. Then we're gonna write another script that will allow us to flick a ball from our phone to wherever we want. And we're basically gonna try to flick it uh, inside the hoop. Obviously we can take this further and make it more complicated and more cool. For example, we could say if you shoot a hoop from further away, you get more points. So the way it works is we place the basketball hoop here into the AR world and then we move over there and when we look with our phone back into this direction we're actually gonna see the hoop still here and we're gonna be a bit further away than it and from wherever we are with the phone we're going to be able to shoot um, with the ball. Uh, yeah so this is what we're gonna be doing today so if you find it interesting um, come on board let's get on to it. All right, we'll start by downloading AR Foundation samples, a repo created by Unity to showcase what's possible with AR Foundations. We'll visit their GitHub page and download it as a zip. We'll also download the 3D model for a hoop. Both are linked in the description. Next, we'll install Android Studio. We won't be using it, we just need it for the SDK. Download it from Google and uh, start installing it. The default settings should work fine. Once installed, go to Configure SDK Manager and under SDK Platforms, check the Android 711 box and press OK then OK again to install. Alright. Unzip the AR Foundation sample project and then open it in Unity. There will be lots of example scenes here. Um, feel free to try them now or afterwards and come up with your own cool ideas. We'll go straight into it. Open scenes, then UX and double click on sample UX scene. This will be our starting point. Next, click on AR Session Origin inside Hierarchy and open up the Place Multiple Objects Plane script that appears in the inspector. We'll modify this script to better suit our needs. Copy its contents. Next, create a new folder called AR Free Throw, then create a script inside of it called Place Hoop. 
where you'll pass the contents of the previous script. Next, rename the new class to place hoop and we'll also rename some of the variables. I had some issues with Visual Studio here, so I changed the editor to Sublime Text. Alright, now, this script will take two external inputs, the hoop prefab and the ball prefab, which we'll uh, create shortly. Inside the update function, we need to make sure that the hoop wasn't already placed before we can proceed. That's what the isPlaced flag does. Once we touch the uh, screen, we'll instantiate the spawn hoop at the touch position and then we'll make its parent to be the AR session origin, to be this transform.parent. Once this hoop is instantiated, we should set the isPlaced flag to true, getting us to the next stage. We'll also instantiate the ball and set its parent to be the AR camera. Now we're creating the ball control script, which will handle the controls of, you guessed it, the ball. Alright. Uh, please note how this class requires the rigid body component on line 5, which gives the ball physical properties such as mass or the ability to have forces be applied to it. We're defining the variables for the throw, such as force and damping factors to make sure the ball doesn't go too much astray. Then, we're declaring variables which hold the information about the current throw. The current throw will be defined by our finger swipe on the screen and uh, the variables are such as duration of the swipe, direction of the throw, etc. We need the AR camera to position the ball in front of it. Now we'll initialize our script. And we set the ball's position through the function reset ball, which we'll write a bit later on. Inside the update, we have to define what happens when we first touch the screen and when we release the touch. This two if statements will uh, hold information about our current swipe. Note that when we're on mobile, input.getMouseButtonDown and getMouseButtonUp act as uh, input.getTouch. After we define what happens with these variables, we will take this information and transform it into a force that's exerted onto the ball. This will allow us to throw it. Of course, we also need to give the ball a mass and the ability to use gravity. Note that the end time is equal to 0, zero f uh, text on line uh, 70, 71 shouldn't be written there and I'll delete it shortly after. You can delete it right now. 5 seconds after we throw the ball, we'll reset its position in front of the air camera and remove its mass and the use of gravity. This will allow us, this will allow the ball to float in front of the camera until our, our next swipe. Next, let's import the AR Foundation library. 
we're also fixing a few bugs here, such as renaming all the rigid bodies to have a lowercase b in the middle, and uh, the game objects on line 37 and 39 with lowercase g. Note that we're not changing the, the game object on line 38. Next, delete the end time is equal to zero line, and then we're done here. Next, we'll go on to save the scene into a new one. We will name the new scene AI Free Throw. Such an original name. All right, now go into the screen space UI game object in your hierarchy. Double click on the UI manager script to open it and replace all occurrences of place multiple objects on, on plane with place hoop. It would be better to replace the script altogether with a copy of it which we then change to fit our needs, so that we don't mess with other scenes, but we didn't do that now. Hmm, <laughs> too bad. Anyway, it's not gonna bother us. Now we're going to unpack the hoop and create a prefab out of it. Note that in the video we also downloaded a 3D ball model, but we're not going to end up using it. Instead, we'll create the ball prefab out of the Unis Unity Sphere shortly. Create the models folder and drag your hoop folder into it. To make things clean, I'm also creating a scripts folder to place all the scripts in. Go to your hoop folder, drag the FBX hoop model into the, your scene and uh, select all its child components and uh, place it such that its base is exactly at position 0, 0. Next, we're going to need three materials. One that resembles glass, one for the hoop frame and one for the hoop markings. We'll create a materials folder and place them there. For the glass material, change the rendering mode to transparent and change the albedo's alpha channel to zero. Next, the frame and the, uh, the, the frame and the markings, you can color them however you like. After that, go into the hoop folder and select the FBX file that you initially dragged into the scene and in the inspector tab, assign the materials that you just created into, the co into their corresponding places and hit apply. Now your hoop should look something like this. Add mesh colliders to all objects that are parented by your hoop. This makes sure that the ball will hit the hoop instead of going through it. Next we're going to scale the hoop down to 0.01 on all axes and rotate it 180 degrees on the vertical axis. Once you're done, create a prefabs folder and drag the hoop into it. If prompted, select original prefab. Delete the hoop from our scene. Next, we'll create the ball prefab. Create a sphere inside the hierarchy. Create its material inside the materials folder. You can give it any color that you like. We also need to create a physics material. We'll change its dynamic and static frictions to 0.4 and its bounciness to 0.5. Drag both the created materials onto the sphere. Note that the physics material should, apply in, should appear inside the sphere collider. Next, add the ball control script to the sphere by selecting add component and typing ball control. Next, resize the ball to about 0.3 or 0.4 on all axes. You can put it side by side with the hoop to make sure that it actually fits inside the ring. Once you're satisfied with it, rename the, ball, rename the sphere to ball and drag it into our prefabs folder. Then you can remove both the hoop and the ball from our scene. Next, we're setting up the building process. Select File, Build Settings, then select Android from the Platform tab and click Switch Platform. If everything is installed correctly, it should work out just fine. Make sure to press the Add Open Scenes button to add our scene to the list and check it, then uncheck every other scene. Now select Player Settings. Change the company and product names to whatever you like, but make sure you'll do the same uh, for the package name inside Other Settings. This step is important. 
Under minimum API level, select Android 7.1, the same one that we downloaded in the installation step. For our finishing touches, select your AR session origin object and replace the place multiple objects on plane script with our place hoop script. Drag the hoop and ball prefabs into the place hoop script. Then select screen space UI and in the camera manager field, drag and drop the AR cam object. Then we should be ready to build. Make sure our scene is selected and every, every other scene isn't. Then hit build. Hey.